Hi, I'm Jennifer Lepore, Online Education Manager here at Artist Network, and we have with us in the studio today, Sterling Edwards. Thanks for being here today, Thank Sterling. You. And actually, Sterling's been here for a couple days filming some new videos with us. He was here a couple years back, I guess, and we did right. some uh, videos on your four-step process. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we did uh, autumn landscape at that point and uh, evening landscape. Yes. So now you're back for some more. We did uh, actually uh, color techniques, brush techniques, and went back to the four-step process with that spring landscape. Exactly. And took things a little further with some intuitive painting, uh, Forest Waterfall. That was a gorgeous piece. Well, thank you very much. You are very that. welcome. Thank you. So both of you here right now, I wanted everybody to just get a chance to know you a little bit better and maybe learn um, how you got started painting in the first place. Actually, I started when I was 12. Uh, my parents were encouraged by one of my teachers to have me take art lessons. Uh, this is in Kansas City. So they had me uh, sign up for weekend art classes, which I really loved. I loved art. And uh, this was an oil painting class. And I was a very realistic oil painter for years. Uh, this was eventually followed by some private art lessons. And uh, I even took some art in college. I didn't get, uh, actually get a degree in art, but I did study art in college for a short period of time. And I've just always enjoyed art. And uh, in 1985, I decided to try my hand at watercolors. It looked so easy. So I bought some paints and papers and I wet the paper and put the brush on and the paint just went everywhere. And I realized I needed some help. So a friend of mine recommended uh, Zoltan Zabo, who was my mentor. He became my mentor over a period of years, but he was my, uh, really my inspiration for learning my watercolor technique. He taught me how to paint with large shapes, big brushes, and focused more on the, on the large shapes and the colors and the values rather than getting hung up on the tiny detail, which I've been doing for so many years. So it's been a gradual learning process. I'm still learning. I'm a lifelong student. Yeah. I know you mentioned that the fun is actually in the learning. It is. Uh, I, I tell people that in my workshops particularly. Um, once you learn how to paint and you become pretty competent, you're more or less just doing more of the same old, same old. When you're learning how to paint, there's a certain sense of exhilaration. When you try something several times and suddenly it works, you think, my gosh, this does work. I can do this. You know? And it just, it's the most wonderful feeling in the world. So I encourage people to enjoy the learning process. That's where the real fun is, is learning. And that's why I still, from time to time, will try new things just to have that sense of elation when something works. I'll try new techniques, new mediums. Uh, I, I need to sense that myself, that, that feeling of, by golly, I can do this. It works. I can, I can branch out and go a whole different direction if I choose to. That would be energizing for sure. Oh, it is. And how did you get started on your four-step process? Because it seems like it teaches people quite quickly how they can actually do some watercolor painting too. It does. The four-step process came about uh, out of necessity. I was doing a workshop at Cheap Joe's several years ago. And the very first day of the workshop, I had people lined up three or four, five deep at my drawing table saying, I want to paint this. Would you paint the sky first or the foreground first or what would you do? And I would have kind of walk that person through the starting process. And then behind them was somebody else saying, well, how would you start this piece? Well, that evening I got thinking that there's, there's got to be a universal way to approach a painting, whether it be a, an abstract, a floral, portrait, landscape, anything. And we always think about painting the background, middle ground, and foreground, and so forth. And I developed the four-step process because it's a very simple way to break a painting, uh, a watercolor particularly, into four very distinct steps that allows you, uh, it reinforces the idea of saving some white paper, putting in very rich darks, and then having lots of mid-tones that act as connectors that kind of connect and glue all the shapes together. So what I teach is that about 80% of the painting is probably mid-tones. You've got 10% light and 10% dark. And it's just a very simple way to coordinate them, regardless of what the subject is. And it works. Uh, I've seen people, I get emails all the time from people that have done it, and they send me photographs of pieces they've won awards and shows with using this four-step process. And uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, knowing you're actually helping people. Mm -hmm. And to see that confidence that they have once they can see a plan <clears throat> of action and just do it. Exactly. And it does instill a sense of confidence, because suddenly you're not so intimidated by the subject matter. You actually think, I can do this. I can break this down into those four steps, and I stand a, a probably better than average chance of making this thing really work, and possibly doing a very exceptional piece of art. So it works. It works quite well. I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> very good. And how did you actually get started doing your workshops? Actually, in 1993, in, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, I opened a gallery, a very small gallery. And of course, with the gallery came bills. There's uh, you know advertising, utilities, rent, so forth, upkeep furnishings, 
it was quite costly, and I had to have a way to make some money to pay my rent. So I started teaching a Thursday night class. And one of the girls that took my class was a counselor, and she counseled battered women. And she had a farm outside of town, and she asked me if I'd consider doing a workshop one weekend for some of the battered women. Because art is, art is a wonderful therapeutic thing. It really does get you to focus on something besides your problems. And uh, usually you start working on a painting within 10 minutes, you're so drawn into that painting, it, the rest of the world is not even there anymore. You just focused. So I agreed to do this. And um, we did a few weekend workshops, very small groups. And then word got out in the community that I was doing these workshops, and the average uh, general public started saying, well, how about doing some workshops for us too? So it became, a, a, you know, maybe once or probably twice every two or three months, I'd do a workshop out there. And then I got uh, invited to do a workshop at a place up in Virginia, and then some people in South Carolina said, how about doing a workshop down here? And then I went to Canada with some people and did some workshops, and it just grew exponentially. I didn't really anticipate this would happen. It's, uh, it's something I did really just a way, as a way to pay my rent you know, in my gallery. But it's turned into a, a very nice business. I travel coast to coast. I travel up in Canada. We're getting ready to go to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I just got back from Newfoundland. We just, I, I meet the most incredible people as a workshop teacher because they, they bring me in for a week and I teach them my techniques, my four steps, and we just we have a grand time. It's wonderful. Best life I can think of. <laughs> and now you have a gallery again. We just opened a gallery about a week ago, in, in, uh, not Winston-Salem, but in Hendersonville, North Carolina. It's a working studio and gallery. When I'm not on the road teaching, I'll be at the studio working on paintings, and the, you know, the public can come in and watch me paint, and they can in, inquire as to what I'm doing. And at the same time, they can see a lot of my work also, uh, which includes my black and white photography as well as my paintings. So it's, it's quite exciting. Do you have any uh, new directions you're heading when you're um, painting? Is it just watercolor or are you going into other mediums? Actually, I do. I still do oils. I don't sell my oil paintings, but I still do a few a year just to keep my hand in it so I don't get too rusty with it. What I'm really doing right now is working more. Uh, I'm, I will never leave watercolor. Watercolor is my number one medium. I totally love watercolor and I love teaching watercolor. I've built a career around that. But I'm also doing a lot of work for galleries, including my own gallery, where I'm doing these very large acrylic abstracts. Uh, there's a huge market for abstract work. A lot of corporate clients are buying these pieces, and uh, people have these large houses on top of the mountains, these big, you know, 14 foot ceilings. They want a big, bold piece. And um, what's interesting is I can use a lot of the same techniques for the acrylic abstracts I use in my watercolors, even the four step process. And using the same brushes I use, these are brushes I designed, these very stiff bristle brushes. They work for oils and acrylics as well as watercolors. So it's, uh, again, I'm branching out, experimenting, trying new things. I'm getting that sense of excitement again when you try something new and it works, you know. So mm -hmm. I just keep learning. I'll never stop learning. I'll never stop experimenting. you got to keep doing that. You got to. I'm so glad that you had time to come in and be with us again. It's been great having you here. Well, it's been wonderful being here. This is a great group. We've had a lot of fun the last couple of days. Uh, last time I was here, we had a wonderful time, and, and this was uh, certainly a, as good as I expected it to be. Very nice. Good. Well, hopefully we'll have you back again sometime soon. Well, you let me know. I'll be back. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jennifer. You're welcome.